Hi, it's Joanne. Today I'm going to be watching The Boys, season one, episode five. Is it five? Yes, season one, episode five. Good for the soul, which I really hope this episode is. <laughs> I am really, really enjoying this show so far, and it's still a show that I feel like could go in so many different directions, and so many other directions would be terrible, yet amazing at the same time. I'm ready for some of these evil people to die. I also don't expect any of them to, because it's not the kind of show where you get what you want. I'm <laughs> sorry if my voice sounds a little bit, I don't know, strange. I've just been playing Phasmophobia for the first time, and my voice is, my, my throat hurts because I was screaming. <laughs> but yes, I am ready for the boys. If you would like to watch the unedited version of this reaction, you can see it up on my Patreon, um, where you also get two weeks ahead, so up to episode seven unedited is already up on my Patreon. And if you would like to get the edited YouTube version a week early, in the lower tiers, you can also check that out on my Patreon. And Patreon is where this show was, um, I can't speak, where this show was picked in the poll. What am I doing with my hair? I, I'm sorry. I am with it, I promise. I'm more with it than I seem. <laughs> no, I'm very ready for this episode. I have been just really enjoying this show so far. Um, I'm just ready to, so surely we're getting like, we're at the halfway point of the season now, like, you know, as soon as I press play, I passed it, surely some of the bad guys are going to start getting comeuppance a little bit, but yeah, let's go. Oh, that's where he took her, because you can run fast. You know, I think, I think I got it worked out. I think oh, I have what's some, he done? some good to come clean with me, like, I have to know who you told about compound. Yeah, he's using her. I told these, these round guys. guys. Yeah, oh no, don't. No? The noodle pack. Dark hair, real smug oh asshole, buzz cut French guy, I don't like big this. black over the goatee, and a skinny white kid. I think they were all working together. Mm -hmm. Oh dear, I'm stressed because he's gonna start getting IDs on them. I what a nice memory to have before I kill you. Here's someone. Yep. Yep, I told you. Expecting the worst was the correct answer. He could have killed her quicker than that, but I suppose that looks like she killed herself. Mm -hmm. Don't pretend you feel bad, because if you really felt bad, you wouldn't have done it. Good. Yeah. He does not. You know. Oh, and <laughs> really these men so much. Screwed up, you know. I love you. He does not. Family. He's gonna like crush you. Probably not to death. Always be watching over you. Yeah, like I'm watching you, and always. You will never escape. So we can find these fuckers who did this to you. So I can get you back home. Really strike me. They could have as something so real, but type. there's such a yeah, laps, problem in their room. I served my time in Sunday school. <gasps> Mom! Meet in the bar. Hi. Mm -hmm. Hi. Uh, how nice. She's how gonna be like, nice. he's not a super, he's not enough for you. Jesus said, hey, bro. <laughs> Did he? Hey, bro. Bring it in. God's watching from up above right there. Over there. Yeah. Yeah. It's doing this, right? boy's asshole. Obvious. Because we believe. So all of these people that believe, they just didn't get it. Fifteen thousand dollars. This is from that club you took me to. You remembered our first night together. I'm touched. <laughs> oh, God. This is the first time I'm hearing about Transoceanic oh, Flight 37. How could you stand there and say this? 123 brave souls lost in an instant in a senseless act of Maeve. violence. Maeve. Samuel Brown, a teacher in yep. physics. I don't blame her. From Los Angeles. I hope this helps her break away from Homelander and Vault and doesn't have bad repercussions for her. We're all truly sorry for your loss. My point is that you took action. That's what I love about you, Mae. Yeah, and you didn't take action, you let a plane crash. Nobody wanted that airplane to go down the way it did, of course not. You did, because you're using it for political goals. And otherwise... Do not say they die for nothing. Otherwise, it was all for nothing. This piece, no, this glob of existence, this glob of disgusting existence. What are you talking about? It's always been there. My God. I know it's kind of my responsibility, I guess, no. to get her to accept Jesus, but oh God. it feels weird to me. Well, yeah, it is weird. Jesus also says to love your neighbor. I'm a virgin. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, waiting for marriage. Saving myself for my future husband. Ugh. See? Hebrews 13.4. Saving Let yourself, valid and fine. We are here for saving ourselves. Immoral. I mean, like, till you're ready and you want okay. to. But for your husband, saving. 
few more. Sickening. I'm Why is there a fly really everywhere? Sure That's the second random fly I've seen. If there is, you believe in God? I mean, I don't know. What? Come off it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't so think it's God, up there anything, there, there keeps being a fly. Is there like some chaos? superhero that turned so into a fly? Because it was in the last Robin, episode, kind of and now. Is that what you're saying? Or there's flies around. You're a miracle. Oh. You're my miracle. But you're my miracle, so you have to be hey. the exact way I want you to. Hey, you too. Fine. It's just... More hypocrisy, more lying. Remember. Behind the scenes of it is not as glamorous or as honest okay. and pure as you think. Oh. Every time he starts to feel something true for her, he sees Harry. Remembers Robin. Hook me up with some tickets. Mm. Yeah. Feels yeah. like she's being used, because she sure, is. Of course. In more ways than she thinks. This is the pediatrician. Maybe reschedule it. I've already rescheduled This man is so times. controlling. What is you there is an opportunity here. He wants to capitalize on the people scared. he killed. They don't trust Because he killed them. Or the he calls that to They hate foreigners. Talk to you later. The speech is perfect. Trust me. Trust You're a corporate drone. Okay. You have to do what you're told. That's what you always say. He's fucking listening to me. You're so full of shit. You say you want my input, Poor little but bubba. you don't. He's going to kill that baby one day. I'm no, very scared. you don't. We used your last name. You said beloved wife. But you buried an empty fucking coffin. We didn't bury anything. No. Just um, a headstone. Oh, that's a sick fucking joke, then, isn't it? Well, you're wondering why we didn't tell you. <laughs> oh, so that's his wife's sister, and she's dead, but there's no My body. Mom's getting old. It's fucking nothing. It's nothing because there's nothing fucking down there. Then let them have you it. Know, Rebecca's still out there, so. Yo, Dr. Robinson. I wouldn't mind you. Or is he mourning her by watching her weird <laughs> films? Just another lie, Donovan. Oh, God. Who are you? That's not good. No. This is. I want to know more about so Black Noir. Who the hell is he? How are these people have spent that much money on it? God knows. Right? You're Starlight's friend. She got you in here. Huey. He must be a special guy. <laughs> I hate this man so much. No, no, no. We will be rebaptizing you. Oh. My most loyal followers. You will be washed clean of all your sins. Will you now? I'm up, you mate. Ugh. I really want these two to come up to head to head in like a sort of enemy way and remember Something this day. Wrong, Huey? Deep breath. Then I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy <laughs> Spirit. <laughs> does he suspect, does he know Huey's the dude that. Does he know about it or is that just him being a dick? Just hold on. One second. Is his, was his phone in his pocket? Because if it was, it's soaked through and it's going to be broken, right? Huey! <laughs> you fucked me. What? <laughs> yeah, in a Improvising. Like jazz. With poise and <laughs> skill and He's doing willingness well. to improvise. Video! I have a video! I have a video of the three of us mm -hmm. sucking and fucking. And if you don't let me go, my friend puts the video online like that. Really polio vaccine, are they? Mm. They're compound V. Oof. Who the hell are you? I want to know everything about him, okay? You tell me you tell me where they're going, and you tell me how many boxes... There's just so many there. strands, and there's so many people here that could hear them, and I'm very stressed. No. And you're also going to stop the fucking pray the gay away shit. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's your choice. Thank you, Huey. That last bit was essential. You're like the fucking rain man of fucking people over. <laughs> <laughs> Not a compliment. <laughs> Don't dig it up or something. Or smash it. If it comforts her family, let them have it. I get that he's grieving and that he's not processed this for the last eight years, but if it brings people some comfort, it doesn't hurt anyone. He just left them with a mission. Fucking brilliant. I'll meet you at the hospital in half an hour. Fucking brilliant. Let's hear it for Jesus! So, do, <laughs> woo, Jesus! Do they give Compound B to babies? Because, is that like how they make new supers? Some people... Ugh. They want me to come out here and speak empty platitudes to you all. Yeah. A little bit of what did you expect? I gotta wait for Congress to say it's okay. Yeah, imagine following the law of the land. I say... 
These people are trampers. Yeah. Can't stop him. We need to figure out how to murder this man and then do it. Very unflattering angry. Where's Freckles? Freckles died two years ago. So it's been a while. I miss you. You don't get to say that. Was she forced to well forced to break? Did you Leave. choose to break up with her so that she could be in the seven? Wave? It's too hard. Please talk to Starlight. What Together happens? you can help each other through it and smash everyone to pieces. Tell me what happened. Well, okay, you'll figure it out. Okay, you'll figure it out. Oh. You always know what to do. Oh. I'm scared because if she says to too much to her, okay. she might get her killed by someone else. Just Oh, I need Maeve to get just happier and healthier me. and she deserves okay. to be able to love whoever just she wants to love. Happened. Oh, I just had to pop down the shop. It's running a bit low on mind your own fucking business. She does have some good lines. What about the girl? Fucking Labour. No. You don't want to. Burn. This is not going well. Being here would feel like it used to, but it doesn't. It's changed, or maybe I've changed, but... You can see the truth behind the lies and the hypocrisy. Honey. Your daughter is having a crisis. Be there for her. I've been years for this. It's her life, not yours, you crazy bitch. This isn't about you. No, it's it? not. No, it's not. I, mean, I, I can't... Your mother is abusive. She's toxic. She's one of those parents living her own dreams through you. It's not right. I really want you? them to be able to help her. It's not who you are either. And we the same, you and I. Like eggs. Hard outside, soft inside, or pineapples, perhaps. <laughs> <sighs> she needs to kill Adrian, but... See, he's been soft and gentle when he had you locked up. Please, 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 don't attack him. Oh, yeah. Okay, at least she ran away. Self in hot water following a hit <laughs> attempt to free a dolphin. Halting the dolphin <laughs> through the front windshield to the room. And then he just sat there like, like a sad child. child. If you deserve better. I am so honored to be here tonight. Then the toxicity you know surrounding the entire life. Appearance? Please stop. Oof. Her their soups are not doing what they want today. Just suck it up and do this for you. Hmm? I'm proud of you. You're strong. I love it's you. It's just how goddamn certain <laughs> everyone Stole is. Cost. <laughs> She's like, this was my short one. Bucks, so that it also says that it's a sin to eat shrimp. <laughs> If you're yes, go. If you're gone, and if you have I sex love you. before marriage, that's that's not immoral. That's human. I love you. This is inspiring. What's immoral is the guy who shoved his dick in my face. Yeah, you piece of shit. <laughs> my love, I'm. You're brave. You're strong, and you're powerful. You deserve so much better than what you've Here's had. Here's the truth. And I know, I know, I'm supposed to be this hero, idol, symbol, whatever, but... He's in love. I don't this know what the hell... This is I'm the most doing. inspirational thing. This would be a hero I would just die for. I'm just as scared and confused as the rest of you. This is inspirational. I'm done pretending. Thank you. I am proud of you. You deserve the world. <laughs> I'm with Huey. They're giving it to, they're properly giving it to babies. Jackpot. Got Belvy? Oh yeah, and lots of it. They're giving it to a baby? Is that how they make superheroes? Jesus. Are all superheroes made with compound V? Joel at the garden, that was- I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Ooh. I'm so glad. My girlfriend died. What? Oh, I love them. Happened not too long ago, and I came here looking for a way to get out of the shit that I'm in right now. And that wasn't fair to you, and I'm so sorry. I really love both of these characters Everything so I heard deeply. Here, well, that helped a total of jack shit. Until you started speaking. Except for what you said. I mean, you're right. There's nobody knows. I love that connection. 
so much. Yeah, they deserve the world. I really hope he can eventually tell them the truth and she'll be okay with the fact that he's anti-safe and help. I don't know. Ah! Oh god. Hey. Yep. Hey, keep him busy. So you're gonna unleash the baby. That is just so... <laughs> Oh my god, he literally is gonna- I was joking! <laughs> this poor baby is gonna be traumatised, isn't it? Oh, that poor baby. Trauma for life. So she knows he does this weird watching. Have I not been paying enough attention to you? Manipulation you central. Lonely? Just whenever these two are alone, I'm very uncomfortable. Oh, I'm, I'm even more uncomfortable, please. No, I'm just, I'm uncomfortable. You have to be good. She's like a weird mother you figure. You listen to me. Weird sexual mother figure. I'm so and creeped out. Both... Can we get caught? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yep. Oh. Yep. I mean, it's about time we saw more of Black Noir. This wasn't the way I wanted to. <gasps> yes! She's saving him! I want to know more about this guy. He's like one of the seven women we know nothing about. Oh, yes. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. Oh no. Oof. I mean, he ran away instead of capturing her. I mean, I wanted to get to know her. Is she alive? Because the music stopped. She's alive, right? She's alive. She can heal. I like her. Oh, She's healing in more ways than one. Another brilliant episode. Believe Expo was very disturbing. I mean, I know that there are real like religious festivals kind of like that that happen. Um, when I was on holiday in Cornwall a couple of years ago, we kept driving Mars on. Um, and I just find that that whole atmosphere quite creepy, especially when it's the kind of religion that is very intolerant. Um, I mean, my views personally align closer to butchers than anyone else's in the show so far, like that I've expressed their religious beliefs. But you know, I would fight for everyone to have the right to have their own beliefs, whatever they be, whether they're atheist, Christian, Hindu, Muslim, whatever. Um, so the fact that they were being hypocritical, being like anti other religions, being anti sex before marriage, being anti same sex couples, you know, there's just such hypocrisy and disgustingness in the real church and religion. And you know, I'm sure that there are people. There, there have been people who are atheist can also be awful people. I'm not being like, it's not just religious people, but yeah. I'm like, kind of like that the show didn't shy away from that. But then you also have people like Starlight, like Annie, who she truly believes in God and has faith, but it's a faith that I could respect. It's a faith that, you know, I could get behind if I were to have faith. Um, And it made me love her even more. So yeah, that the whole expo was very realistic. It made me really randomly crave the sort of burger you get at like a food store <laughs> at an event like that because I haven't been able to leave my house in months. Um, too much information I'm sure but yeah. So I really enjoyed the furthering of Annie and um I'm gonna say Annie and Starlight, <laughs> of Annie and Huey's relationship, of their connection. I mean I definitely think it's far too early for it to become romantic if it were to right now. Um, mainly because of his girlfriend but also because there is still too much that they don't know that he doesn't know she doesn't know sorry stopping that from being healthy but I think Huey is definitely in this weird place where the part of him that feels this rage this absolute destructive grief and rage against all soups because of what happened to his girlfriend is okay with using her it's the part that helps him push through it helps him ask her for the ticket and helps him ask and use her and put the stuff on her phone. And then there's the other part of him that really connects with her and really sees who she is and what a good person she is. And that, you know, I feel like if he had been with Robin and he'd met her and they'd become friends, he would have been her friend. Um, kind of that he can just really connect to her, that they have something that just sparks together. And that can be platonic, that can stay platonic. But I really, really think that he's in that sense caught in a crossroads and I sort of hope at some point he tells her what he's up to but I feel like as it's a TV show most likely she's gonna find out and it's gonna cause them to not like each other or something um but I definitely think as well we've seen how much every step of the way she is turning away from the seven away from Vault. so maybe she would be more coming around to it but 
the fact that he lied to her, she probably wouldn't. So sticking with Huey, the whole bit where he had to be baptised was very terrifying. And Homer is just a dick. Um, yeah, like, I think it's funny that it, it wasn't clear that it was to be baptised. But he's good on his feet, you know, like, he was like, oh yeah, when you baptise someone, you just babble and say everything. And he did just babble and say anything. He probably could have just been like, I have video of you with two men at a club. You were really, like, kind of giving him enough details for him to believe he had the video. Without being like, it was me. <laughs> Your dick was so long, you know, like he didn't really need to go into that much detail, but he sold it in his own weird way. Like under high pressure situations, Huey panics, freaks out, and then deals with it really well. So that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun to watch in the sense that it was just crazy and I was very stressed, but I kind of believed he would pull through it. I think the more time he spends in this world, the easier he is going to start finding that kind of situation and potentially the darker he will get. But that doesn't have to be a totally bad thing. You know, you can kind of use that side to you for good. Um, and I like that we still very much got, you know, that Billy is like, oh, here's a plan, go do it. It's dangerous, I don't really care. You know, you'll be fine. You can do it. I did it. I've done it. And then M is like, well, yeah, that, that I don't like, I don't think he's ready. And kind of, he let, he doesn't like, no, you can't do it. But he's kind of more... Well, let's think about this rationally. Why? Yeah, you know, I don't know. I'm babbling, but yes. So Huey and I really enjoyed this episode, and just I really enjoyed his reaction to Starlight's speech, which I will talk about further later. Um, I really enjoyed the way he just saw that she really was the person he hoped she was, and the person that he thought she might be. And I think that conversation they had at the end was so real. You know, all it needed was for him to be able to say, "And I'm working against the soups book like Adrian." Um, but I really, really enjoy the way that scene played out and how, you know, he genuinely apologised for the part of him that had used her. And he finally told her, because again, if you take superheroes out of business, if you just, if you start seeing someone, you kind of friends, kind of a bit more, and then you just had a devastating loss in your life, she deserved to know that. In the sense that like, if you're really gonna bond with someone, you should tell them the truth. Um, and I think that will really help their relationship further, although the biggest secret is still being kept from her. But I just found them really, they're, they're just, their scenes are just so sincere. They feel so just real and their connection is so palpable and I love it. Um, so then Starlight, again, this episode we really kind of saw, we learned even more about her roots. We kind of knew it, but we got like further explanation about, you know, how she'd go to all the Christian things and all the camps and how her mother is very much one of those parents that is living her own dream through her child, is forcing her into things she might not want to do. And, you know, the way Annie was talking to her about how she doesn't think she can do it and it's not what she thought it was, she was very clearly in distress. And the mother's response was, you just, I deserve it you should go and live your life for me because I raised you. No, I'm sorry, any parent that has that kind of attitude, if you choose to have a child, whether you choose to give birth, adopt, whatever, you choose to have a child, be your child, that's your job. Your job is to raise that child, to love it, to be give it what it needs, to be there for that child until it's 18, but you might have a child that needs you to be there for them further than that. You know, you don't have the right to be like, I've sacrificed a lot for you. No, yeah. Yeah, you create, you, I'm the reason, you know, that, yeah, you have to. So I hate that kind of parenting, it's disgusting. And just the fact that she could look at a daughter that was clearly struggling, clearly in distress, and instead of being like, well, maybe we can get them to delay it a little while while you tell me what's going on, you know, she might have confessed that she'd been raped. She might have said how it's not what I thought it was. And maybe for the crazy stage mom, like basically, which is what she is, it's just superhero y, she might have been able to talk about it with her and get her to a better place with it, I don't know. But cannot stand her. I'm very intrigued to see what her response will be, the mother, because we kind of just saw her looking very shocked. Now, was that shocked at the fact that her daughter was swearing and saying that, you know, the church, this camp wasn't great, you know, kind of being like rebellious? Or was that distress because she had ignored her daughter in distress because she'd not noticed that her daughter had been raped and, you know, like she hadn't been there for her? I'm very intrigued to kind of I'm both scared and intrigued to see what their next conversation is going to be. But that speech was so inspirational. It was raw. It was maybe more open and raw than she would have wanted if she'd been more in control of her emotions because she revealed a lot about herself there she but i think this is all the stuff that's been bursting inside of her since she arrived you know she was ready to do some real good and instead it's been staged fights and staged promos and say this stuff about you know learning the right way to love jesus and all that kind of stuff and i think it was really really just destroying her keeping all those secrets and so she was able to just say it and say the truth and I love her for that like I said I am not religious but she is the kind of religious person that I really respect I mean I respect everyone's right to be religious but if you're an intolerant religious person you can fuck off and um, if you're an intolerant non-religious person you can fuck off if you support Trump you can fuck off um but I don't want sorry um but I just that speech was genuinely so inspirational and 
I think there will have been a lot of people, especially a lot of young women, but also young men, watching that speech in the world of the boys, really seeing themselves, finding that this all-encompassing faith that you're told you have to have, you don't, if you don't feel it, that doesn't have to mean you don't believe in God, but, and the fact that, you know, if you're in a low, if you, if you are comfortable enough with your body and you choose to have sex before marriage, that is your right. If you wish to wait until you are married, that is your right. But, you know, there is not a right and wrong there. It is per deeply personal to each and every person. And I think just the things she talked about were so inspirational. And then again, the fact that she, she didn't explicitly phrase it as rape, but she basically did without what she said about, you know, putting me to hit, forcing his dick in my face. Um, the fact that she, a public figure, this idol, came forward and said, you know, I was raped, will actually help so many people be able to tell the truth and be able to come tell people, you know, this happened to me, because if she can go through that, if she can come out the other side and tell people about it, you know, if she can be open about it, then that will help others as well. So just in so many different ways, that speech was so inspirational, and we love her even more. Annie and Huey are definitely my two favourite characters, and I'm just so scared for what they're going to go through in the show, because this show, I love it, but it is not a Sunshine and Rainbow show. I mean, to be honest, characters suffer in every show, but yeah, this show, a lot of blood splatters will happen along the way. So I truly enjoyed those scenes. So then Billy, we found out more about his wife, that she's not dead. I mean, she might be dead, but that she's gone missing. So that video he was watching, that CCTV, will have likely been her last sighting, the last time anyone saw her um, before she went missing. And she looked stressed and sad. So God knows what she was into. And I totally, I can understand both sides. I can understand why Billy was feeling that rage, that how dare you just assume she's dead? How dare you, A, burying an empty cask is, is to him meaningless. Her body is not there. She's not at peace. She could be alive out there suffering and you're not looking for her. But the average person can't do that much to look for her, especially eight years later. Um... So I think while I totally understand why he found that so horrible and her they didn't tell him, but also if that helps them heal, if that helps them grieve and live their lives, especially a mother that's aging, then you have to respect that too. You know, if you think that tombstone's meaningless, don't ever go there. That's totally fine. You leave that to them. You find her one day and then you can be like, see, look, you put that tombstone up. I have her, you know. Or if you find her body, you could truly bury her there or something. So while I think it's in keeping with Billy's character that he went and smashed it, I think, like, it's not hurting anyone for them to have that tombstone. It's not like the world works where if you're secretly alive somewhere and then someone puts up a tombstone for you, you just drop dead. Um, so while I totally get that, I think he did overreact slightly. But then it's very Billy. Um, I just can't wait to get to know more of that story. Tragic as I'm sure it is. Then we have the fact that Compound V is being given to babies and that makes them super. So are any people naturally super? Like, is the um, Asian woman, whose name we don't know yet, I don't believe, um, was she like a natural super and so that's why they had her locked up to experiment on or something? Or is she someone they gave it to? And is it just an America, do to, to, to superheroes not exist in the rest of the world? Is that because it is a super American experiment? Because that would really help, you know, the Trumpers be like, we are the greatest nation, and oh, that's not an American accent, I don't want to do it, but we're the greatest nation in the world, we are superheroes. Um, but how do you choose what baby gets it? Do people pay? Like, did her mother scrimp selling houses and pay for her to be a super? Do they do it randomly? Is it babies with good genetics? Like, how do they decide what baby? Is it every baby and then it only takes in some of them? I'm just intrigued to learn more about that. But yeah, so are any superheroes real? You know, are there a few real superheroes and they extract Compound V from them somehow to put it into babies or is it entirely artificial? I'm so intrigued to learn more about this. Um, and yeah, I was joking about how he was going to pick up that baby and use it as a weapon. There was a part of my brain that was like, that's very the boys. And then it happened. That baby, I mean, infant seeing trauma can cause deep seated psychological problems. So that is going to be a crazily superpowered person with potential trauma. But you know, hopefully the little sunshine will be okay. Um, so that was crazy. Then Homelander and um, Sitwell. That's her name, isn't it? I always think of Agents of Shield agents and you know, MCU agents it well. Um, they have just such a creepy relationship. She's like motherly to him and also sexual, and I just I don't enjoy it when they're together. I find it very uncomfortable. I'm convinced he's gonna murder her child. Is her child super? I did not enjoy that scene. I would like to move on from it. She is definitely manipulative. That's how she tries to keep control is through manipulation. Um, even if someone is crazy and like self-important as Homelander. I am stressed about what that man's gonna do. 
Um, I almost forgot to talk about Maeve. I really, really like Maeve. I, my heart breaks for her because she seems to me like someone who has been in Starlight's position, didn't have anybody outside to talk to because the person she did have outside to talk to, her girlfriend, I don't know how serious they were, but it seemed like they had a very, very strong relationship. She was clearly forced to break up with her. I guess it was like being the seven and save the world or else. And that makes you think that her relationship with Homelander wasn't even remotely loving. It wasn't like she fell for him and then found out he was abusive. It's not like she was just sort of forced to date him. And ugh, gross. But it's the fact that they've got this real, like, squeaky clean like everyone has to be straight and love jesus to be in vault and everything and so she had to like not be gay i guess so i really hope that going forward she's able to find a way to be true to herself and you know yes yeah, she's drinking again and maybe she had a problem like that before she became part of the seven but it's a coping mechanism because her life is so bleak her life is meaningless because the superheroing is meaningless she's forced part with homelander and what he does and i'm scared for her because i feel like she's very much at a tipping point and going over the edge because of what happened on that flight, what she was forced to witness. I really hope she's able to connect with Starlight somehow. I think they could be a really good influence for her because Starlight will help them to remind her maybe who she used to be a little bit, you know, the hope she used to have, the belief she used to have. I mean, the fact that she is fe she's feeling it so hard now makes me think that she was more like Starlight. So I love me. I'm so intrigued to learn more about her relationship with Lena. Was, um, and I just, I really, I love Maeve, I think I called her Starlight, sorry. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm scared for Maeve. Um, old Popclaw, did not think she was long for this world, did not think A-Train. A-Train is like, I'm so I'm grieving the fact that I had to murder you. Piece of shit. You can die. I, I just want them all to die. Um, I am probably missing things, I'm very sorry. But so much happened in this episode, I can't believe that was just one episode. Um, I loved the fact, well, I just... The look of terror in stupid Deep's face when she said that because hopefully they're going to figure out it was him, they're going to trace it back and they're going to kill him. I would like them to kill him. But that guy is an idiot and needs to die already. Why didn't he go through the windshield and get squished by the truck with the perverted dolphin? But no, this was another brilliant episode. We furthered the characters. The one character I would like to see more of is Black Noir, mainly because I know nothing about him. He's not beyond the fact that he isn't chatty because when Starlight tried to talk to him, he just did not respond. Um, but he's quite happy going along with A-Train's plan. So he definitely seems like he's in on the dark, darker side of things. But what is he like? And then, of course, we have um, Frenchie who has been burnt. All of his safe houses are gone, um, which is messing up his life epically and putting him in danger. I'm very stressed in general because all across the board, the boys are leaving trails that can be picked up by people that are onto them and people are now onto them so it's very stressful but i really like that he was able to get through to i think it was probably the time the prolonged time of his kindness of his gentleness of him not hurting her of him kind of being kind to her would have helped her brain to start to process him not as fear not as someone that's going to hurt me but someone that is there is being kind and i really enjoyed the fact that she came back to save him and that and that she's alive, thank God, because I was thinking, what a waste of a brilliant potential character. Yes. I mean, I'm sure she's going to cause a hell of a lot of havoc. She's been through hell. But I really want her to get a proper progression into being healthy and happy and to take down the evil superhero that did this to her or whatever is happening. But they have such a cute bond already. Like, just another bond that you just really feel it, like, transcends through the screen and it's just brilliant. So, yes, I'm waffling a lot. I mean, I always do in my reviews, but I love this episode. Another reminder that if you would like to watch the unedited version of this reaction and all my reactions to all my shows and the next two episodes as well, up to episode seven, that is up on my Patreon for the Super Friends and the Human Tears. And if you would like to get the edited version early, that is up on my Patreon for the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. tier. Um, and you can get a week early, so that's up to episode six. And if not, the totally final. I appreciate all my patrons. I appreciate all my YouTube viewers. Thank you so much for watching.